Venom! Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about more books that were donated to us by Cam Frazier. Uh, so big thank you to Cam, thank you so much for donating these issues. And these ones I paired together uh, because I wanted to get kind of an International Women's Day episode in there too, kind of, uh, because I was like, I saw an opportunity too. I was like, you know, it's, it's International Women's Day today. I'm only for like 20 more minutes though, um, before it's midnight to my time. Um, but, uh, but these are, like when I started reading these that Cam sent us a couple days ago, I was like, okay, I can group together Spider-Woman and Black Cat and kind of do like an all-female uh, episode. So that's what we're doing today. And so to help, you know, help celebrate International Women's Day, I hope this goes up very soon, uh, but we'll see. Obviously, I'm always behind. I always record things ahead and I get behind. So if you're watching this later, it was filmed on International Women's Day. Uh, so thank you all for supporting the show. I appreciate it. And thank you again, Cam, for uh, donating these issues to us because these ones, the, the Spider-Woman issues, I kind of enjoyed and kind of didn't like I'm half and half on them because I like stuff with the high evolutionary but I don't like um, some of the dialogue in this book and kind of some of the areas they're taking uh, the character of Spider-Woman but we'll get into that uh, but the black cat issues we're going to get to at the end I freaking loved so we're going to get into spoilers here so if you don't want any make sure you go read these books they're out in stores now and uh, and please pick them up especially the black cat ones they are freaking awesome but obviously make up your own mind regarding the spider woman stuff because it's just my opinion this is what i'm going to give but i encourage everyone to you know feel free to try everything yourself don't go off of what i say i look at things a certain way and you guys obviously look at things a different way so um, don't let my words influence that at all uh, but uh, with this issue with Spider-Woman, it starts with issue, I think, eight or so. Um, I think it's like eight, eight and nine or seven and eight. Uh, it's like two two issues back to back. Carla Pacheco is the writer of these and Perry Perez is the artist. I love the art on these books. I love the art so, so much. Uh, Perry Perez has been drawing comics for a while and I've always loved Perry's stuff. But uh, Carla Pacheco, I wonder if she's related to, um, there was an artist uh, uh, with the last name Pacheco. Um, I don't know if she's related to him at all. Um, or if she's, you know, it's just coincidence or whatever, but, um, but this is my first exposure to her writing, uh, because I actually haven't, I have the first trade of this, but I haven't read it yet. I haven't had time. So I, I don't really know, you know, uh, this is, this is me basically doing my first ever review of a Carla Pacheco book. And I don't dislike the kind of, uh, you know, the characters used. I kind of like how she brought in like Captain Marvel and Hawkeye and and uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage and stuff and kind of made it about them because they have appeared in King and Black and they kind of were sent off into the background. So this is kind of nice to see, um, you know, uh, Spider-Woman show up and like, you know, interacting with them. And But Spider-Woman's also seems to be going through something. So again, I haven't been reading the books, but it looks like her powers are also some kind of disease to her now and it's poisoned her and I guess her her child as well and so now she's looking for a cure and in doing so she's been taking these uh, syringes full of some kind of liquid and she's injecting herself and it's causing her to kind of rage out and she's losing control of her emotions um, but it's it's keeping her powers semi in check or, or le it's not letting the powers I guess eat away at her as quickly I, that's what I'm gathering though because I'm not really like following the book so reading this I'm like all right I'm a I'm, I kind of understand what they're doing here so she has to take these things to help herself but they're not really helping her maybe and it's causing her to freak out and it's causing her to even turn on some of her friends and say really harsh things uh but so they kind of start the book off and new york is you know completely taken over i think at the end of the last issue they had like a page or two that reveals that you know now king and black has started so i don't have the issue before this one um but it, i'm just gonna assume that the last issue ended with like a big splash page showing new york being taken over by symbiotes so that's where this takes place and we have like this nurse who is now dating Hawkeye but Hawkeye used to uh, I guess date uh, Jessica <laughs> you know the spider woman um and so there's like some of that banter there but it's like New York has literally been taken over by symbiotes there's symbiotes literally on the walls all around them in the buildings and they're having this like stupid fight you know this emotional fight and I'm I'm not a fan of that like I was like uh, okay I get it like it you know the there are people too and superheroes and they have to have human moments, but this just seemed a little, I wasn't really digging that part at the beginning, but then it picks up the dragon, one of the dragons shows up, of course, because all these tie-ins are mainly just, oh, a dragon shows up, and then they got to fight a dragon, one of the symbiote dragons, and, uh, and that's what shows up, but I like there's a scene where uh, Danny, Rand, uh, they're like all huddled together, and Danny goes, I got this, and they're like, oh, we'll fight as a team, Danny, and he goes, I fought dragons before, and they're like, we know Danny. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I really like that. I thought that was like a really funny, humorous uh, moment. So I would say that even though some of the the uh, like fighting like between the characters I thought was really forced in some of these scenes, um, almost even to the point where like Jessica when she takes the drug it, it makes her elevated and she gets even to, into more fights with these friends of hers. That's what I kind of don't like about the book too. It's like these people have all worked together many, many times and they do have a friendly relationship in for the most part. I mean, yeah, there's a couple like Hawkeye and Jessica would probably have a little weirdness around each other, I guess, uh, considering past things. But to me, ultimately, I feel like they're all at this point professionals in their career and the world is, you know, being t taken over by symbiotes. So I thought they'd put a little of that aside, but I did appreciate some of the humor. I think Carla does a really good job at some of the jokes in here. I thought some of them actually did land and make me laugh. So I did like that. Um, and the art is fantastic. So uh, when, you know, Jessica or Spider-Woman injects herself, she, she gets her energy powers, her blast powers, goes up, fights the dragon, blows it apart, uh, rips its head off, and then she's just beating it to death on the ground. And everyone's like, should we stop her? And they're like, eh. Let her let some of that frustration out because that's the the drugs you know talking basically that's like that's her reacting to the drug she just took and then after she seemingly kills this big dragon carol goes over and grabs her and says okay you need to stop now and then the two of them get into a fight and jessica starts saying really mean things to carol like you know to, uh, calling her like you know saying like you know you're, you're you know you don't have any kids like you don't have a mom you know you don't understand and she's like throwing these personal attacks at her and i was like wow Again, I'm not into the little bickering fighting at the top, but that, I mean, when someone is on a substance, they will go that route, you know, um, to, to hurt someone. And they don't, they don't mean it, you know, sometimes, but that is something that happens. So that part I really liked that Carla did. Um, and then pretty much for the rest of the book, I didn't mind the story. Like that, that little bickering at the front, I was just kind of eh about, but I liked the pacing and the rest of this for the most part. Um, Again, as a King and Black thing, it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense because they do tend to ignore the King and Black stuff from time to time because it seems like the Carla is trying to tell a story here with Spider Woman, her possible mom returning, but it might be a clone, and then the High Evolutionary. It seems like that's more important to Carla than doing a tie-in, and that's pretty clear reading this. I'm like, okay, so the the symbiote thing was that's it. Like they fought the dragon, she killed it. And then now they locked Spider Woman up in a like a, a tube, in a lab, where she says a few more mean things to Carol and causes Carol and the other heroes to walk away. And they're like, all right, well we're gonna go back out and save New York. You're gonna stay here because you can't be trusted. And then that's when her mom shows up, Spider Woman's mom, and uh, and it's a, a clone of her mom. And she shows up, she's like, I'll let you out, and I have another syringe here because it's clear you need another fix. So her mom Octavia. Uh, is there at the end of the issue. So then we have uh, Spider-Woman number eight here. Um, I like the cover. It's like her on the cover with Octavia and there's War Machine, um, you know, in the background. That actually is in the book <laughs> to give, a, you know, a ton of credit. Sometimes you get covers and you're like, is that going to be in the book? It's actually in the book because uh, what happens is Spider-Woman breaks out of her tube at the beginning of the issue, uh, goes to attack Octavia, but then, um, you know, they talk it out basically and they realize that they have to go and break into Stegron, the uh, dinosaur man's lab, to get something. And so they go and do that. And uh, and then after that, they realize they have to break into Tony Stark, or Stark Towers' place, and get something. And then they go do that together, her and Octavia, Spider-Woman and Octavia. And that's where they run into War Machine. The thing about this is, like, in the last issue, Spider-Woman fought Danny Rand. He walked up to her and says, like I said, I've defeated dragons before. Don't make me take you down. And then Spider-Woman takes him down pretty easily. I didn't really like that. It, it seemed like uh, Carla's take on uh, Danny was like a guy who made the joke at the beginning and then never really, like he doesn't, he gets like one hit in on Spider-Woman and that's it. And Spider-Woman just cleans his clock. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not the biggest Iron Fist fan, but I feel like he would stand up, he would go a little bit longer against uh, Jessica. And he even says like, I'm not your friend like Carol is. I'm not going to hold back. And yet he, he still couldn't like, even one up her a little bit or, or seemingly or they couldn't hit like a draw um and i know she's on like she injected herself and you can use that as an excuse but still like i i don't know i feel like sometimes when people write a character of a book they're like all right i'm gonna have them fight someone that they probably couldn't fight in any other like if they were in their book so i'm gonna have them win in this book or something but i don't know i feel like spider woman is very tough and and I, although i'm not a big iron fist fan i think he's pretty tough so i think they could 
it would be a good match. It would be better than this one page skirmish that they, they did. And then she beats him. So I only bring that up because in this issue, she takes down War Machine pretty easily. And I'm like, I'm a huge Rhodey fan. <laughs> I'm a big Spider Woman fan too, but I'm a huge Rhodey fan too. So I'm like, well, I don't feel like it would be that easy, um, to be honest with you. But, uh, but, you know, they're, they're moving along. They're moving the story along and uh, they get back in their ship. Uh, Spider Woman takes what she needs from Stark. She got the thing from Stegron. She gets into the car with Octavia and they're like, okay, now let's go to our final location. And they get there, they get outside of the, the symbiote infested city and they arrive at this location where the high evolutionary is. And behind him is like a hundred clones of Spider Woman's mom. And so the next issue is not King and Black related but it'll deal with the ramifications of this. So if you want to know more, if you're reading Spider-Woman or if you're not, and you want to jump in, like so far, like I said, the only that bickering in issue seven in the beginning, that was the only thing I was like, ah, this feels really forced uh, just to get everyone to kind of hate each other right off the bat uh, when the world is at stake. But then once Jessica injects the, the serum, I'm like, okay, well now it makes sense for her to be an a-hole to everybody. Um, I mean, I guess it does when she's jonesing for it too, but I don't know, it just felt a little forced in the beginning. But after that, I started liking kind of more of the dialogue and stuff. And some of the jokes, I think, landed. But those two fights, I'm like, really? She took down Danny and a War Machine, like, back to back? I, I just, it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow, I guess. I, she kind of takes down Captain Marvel, too. But Captain Marvel, like I, like Danny says, uh, oh, she held her punches. Because Captain Marvel could probably clean your clock. Which I think she probably could, too. But anyway, I don't know, I just... It's just one of those things, right? It doesn't bother me too much, but it did take me out of the story just enough to where I was like, eh, I'm a little critical of it, but Carla did what she thought was best for the story and she moved the story along, which at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want things to keep moving. But this issue, number eight, really didn't tie into King and Black at all. I mean, because they they say like War Machine is protecting this location because, you know, Stark and the others are out fighting Null. But I'm like, I feel like War Machine will be out there fighting Null too. Like, why does he have to protect this place during that? Uh, so I don't know, whatever. So anyway, the, these two issues, I really didn't care about too much. Like they didn't, you know, they, they didn't rock my world as it were, but uh, but they I didn't dislike them either. I, I would say they're still good, but they just don't feel like good tie-ins. Like it's what we said in previous episodes where it just, a dragon showed up and in six pages they kill it. And then it just becomes a different story after that. And it's like it moved on already. So if you're out there collecting all the King and Black stuff, I would say you don't really need the two Spider-Woman issues. Um, but if you're collecting Spider-Woman, I'd say you should probably read it so that you can continue the high evolutionary story. So um, so those ones, yeah, I was just didn't like them as King and Black tie-ins, but as standalone issues, they're okay. I'll probably read issue nine so I can see the conclusion of the high evolutionary stuff. If that's the conclusion, I'm, well, I'll give it one more issue to, to see if I like it more. Um, but uh, Black Cat here is awesome. This book is freaking awesome. Uh, I've read the previous run by uh, Jed McKay, and it was I think it's like 10 issues or somewhere around there. It's two trades, so I think it's two trades. Maybe there's a third one. If there is, I haven't read that one yet, but I've read the two that I, that I know of, uh, that I'm thinking of, and they were great. And the series kind of ended during all of the COVID stuff, and I thought it was gone for good. And I was like, that sucks. This is actually a really good book. They brought it back and they renumbered it with a new number one and have this starting off with a King and Black tie-in. So we got Black Cat number one here and uh, we have, uh, it's called Queen and Black part one, which is awesome. And there's the title card there. So you can see everyone who works on it, Jed McKay writer, CF Villa as the artist, um, and Pepe La Raz did the cover art and stuff. So uh, this book is freaking fun. Like this is a tie-in. Holy cow, This is this a tie-in? This is probably one of my favorite tie-ins um, so far that I've read, uh, definitely. Uh, by far, actually, I would say this is my favorite tie-in. Um, I do like uh, the the some of the, um, the uh, Plan the Symbiote stuff, but I haven't, I'm waiting for issue three to come out so I can review all three of them together. So we'll get there. So I do like some of those. And, um, and I liked the, that Black Panther issue uh, because I felt like that really felt like it had to be part of a symbiote invasion. Uh, like I devil's advocated myself. I was like, I don't feel like it is. But then there's some explanations in there with T'Challa where he explains what symbiotes are and that the weapon can only hurt symbiotes. So I'm like, okay, that makes it less of a, like you can insert any villain here story. And it actually felt like a symbiote story. So I went back and forth on that one. But this this feels like a tie-in. This is freaking awesome. And it's not just a tie-in to this, but it's a tie-in to what's been happening recently in Spider-Man a little bit too, um, which is so cool. Uh, the book starts off and Black Hat is trying to do a heist 
with her two guys. I think Boris and uh, Doctor Corpse or something like that, and uh, and they're they stole the spider buggy, uh, which is so cool that they brought that into the story, and they're using that to to pull off heists. And Black Cat is like they basically set someone up to steal something, and then they robbed those guys. And it's a, called a toe cutter, I think, is the is the term in Australia. Um, and so I was like, this is really great. Like I love what they're doing here with Black Cat. So yeah, and they they made her. You know, she's like super sexy in this book. She's got her tight black costume on. She's looking awesome. Um, and she's uh, she's a badass actually in this book. She's really badass. And as they're doing this mission where they're stealing something on the spider buggy a dragon crashes through the roof and then I'm like oh, okay here we go this is where it's going to be a boring dragon shows up kind of story it's a lot more than that the dragon shows up and they go up on the surface level to see what's happening and that's when all the dragons and everything's coming down to earth um, and so she planned this heist at the wrong time it was when Null was invading and she goes up and Captain America's up there and she goes oh my god Captain America and he goes ah she's like I don't know if you remember me we've met a few times he goes yeah Felicia Hardy Black Cat yeah I know who you are Spider-Man talks about you a lot. And she's like, oh, he does? <laughs> and he's like, yes. And he goes, but I know you're a thief. I know the stuff you've done. He goes, but all that is aside right now. He's like, look at what's happening. New York and the world possibly is being taken over by an enemy, a symbiote enemy. And she goes, oh, man, I hate symbiotes. I hate venom. And he's like, well, we need that. He's like, we need, we need people to fight with us. You know, can you help me fight and protect the civilians while Magneto and Storm and Doctor Strange are up there, you know, uh, fighting the bigger fight and just help me down here on the street level. And she looks up and sees Dr. Strange. She goes, oh, I hope he doesn't recognize me because I stole some things from him lately, which she did do in the Spider-Man books, which is pretty awesome. They reference that. Um, but then he, uh, Dr. Strange gets overwhelmed. So we get to see the scene where he gets possessed. Uh, all these dragons form on him. They put him in a bubble and then they bring him up to the top of the Chrysler building and set him on top of the, 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 you know, the needle up there. And they, cocoon him they cage him in there and that's obviously because you know once the symbiotes take over you you go into that dream world where eddie brock and flash thompson are in that limbo state where they're you know fr trying to free people and so this is we get to see the moment where dr strange gets captured he gets sent in that dream world but this is how they capture him they don't just symbiote possess him they put a cage around him because they're like well he's magic and he's doing things that we can't actually control so we're just going to cage him for now until we figure him out so uh so then Black Cat sees that happen. She goes, oh, crap. And then she sees Storm go down, Magneto go down, and everyone's going down. And she's with Cap, and she goes, what do we do? And Cap goes, you need to get out of here. And he's like, she's like, what? And he goes, I, I, I'll I, fight. I'll buy you some time, but we're going to lose this fight. He's like, you need to go and find some help, and you need to bring people back here. This is why I love this book. So she, who wanted to run in the beginning, now we're fighting side by side with Cap. This is how cool Cap is. He inspired her to want to keep fighting, but she knew running was the, the smart idea at the moment. So she gets in her spider buggy with her friends and they leave because she comes up with a plan. And it's a plan I've been saying, and I'm so glad none of you guys, like, I'm surprised none of you guys actually said, hey, read Black Cat for, for this kind of, uh, for, for that situation. Because I brought it up numerous times. I kept saying, leading into King and Black, why don't, why doesn't Eddie or anyone go to Alchemex? and use some kind of anti-venom symbiote thing because Alchemex was creating the anti-venom symbiotes in the uh, Mike Costa spy, uh, Venom run, the Mike Costa run. And lo and behold, Black Cat was in that story when uh, when Eddie went to uh, Alchemex and they were doing the Venom Inc. storyline. So she goes to Alchemex and she finds Dr. Steve. I'm like, this is what I've wanted this whole time. Like, this is what I've been wanting. I'm so, so happy. When I got to these pages, I was like, this is so freaking great, so incredible. Um, so I'm very happy. So this is a, this is where I'm just going to gush for the rest of the episode and just talk about how amazing I love this stuff. Uh, Dr. Steve shows up. It was so great to see him again. And he's talking to Felicia. And he said, Eddie came to me. He told me to get some stuff ready. I'm processing th some things now, but they're just not ready yet. I'm like, this answers all my stupid fanboy questions. I love it. Because um, I was like, why isn't Dr. Steve involved? Why aren't anti-symbiotes involved? What's going on? Um, and then that's what Dr. Steve says. He says, I've been processing. He's like, all I've been able to do is make two. And he goes, but they don't last long. He's like, these suits, we were trying to do something different. Like we didn't want the user to have them for too long because of, you know, then we would have, they would it would be like a actual symbiote again and it would it could hurt or it could do what happened to flash where he you know 
the more you use the abilities that like end up killing him or whatever. It's like, so we don't want to do that. We don't want to cause any more people to die. So we have, he has these two spheres and he's like these inside each of these is an anti-symbiote. And once you put it on, you have it for a very short time, like not even an hour, basically. He's like, so if you're going to use it, you got to use it um, right when you need it. So Black Cat's like, okay. And then as she's talking to Dr. Steve, he's, she's, he's like, well, is there anyone else to help you? Any other heroes? And she remembers the moment where she looks back and Cap told her to leave and she wanted to stay. Cap starts getting overtaken by the symbiotes. And he's like, no, go. Like, I believe that you can do some good. So find out what we, you know, what will help us the most in this battle and do that. Like, but I, you're, you're stealthy, you're sneaky, you're a thief that you'll figure something out. And I love that. I love that Cap was like this super inspirational person and spoke to her, like got through to her because she's not a bad person. Felicia is actually a really good person, but she does do questionable things sometimes like Catwoman, you know, in the DC universe and stuff. But he, getting a pep talk from Cap is enough to get most people motivated. So I really love that. I love, really love that it worked. So she said, okay, she's back in the, the room with Dr. Steve and she has her Dr. Corpse and, uh, and Boris with her. And she's like, okay, get the spider buggy ready. And also we got to go recruit somebody because we, we have a task. I know how we're going to fight back against these symbiotes. And they're like, how? And he goes, she's like, I'm going to take these two anti-symbiotes and we're going to go steal back Dr. Strange. <laughs> I'm like, this is so good. It's so crazy. It's so like silly over the top um, where she now is going to go steal from Null. And everyone's like, you're nuts. You can't steal from a god. And she's like, why not? I stole from Dr. Strange. I've stole from, uh, you know, a, a, a Tony Stark. I've stole from everybody, especially recently. She goes, a, a demigod who is too busy to notice, even notice me, I think we can get in and get out. We're going to go steal Dr. Stephen Strange back. Oh, my God. I thought that was so cool. So then on the cover of issue two, she's actually in an anti-venom symbiote. And I'm like, okay, I can't wait to read this. What's going to happen? Queen in Black number two, Jed McKay, C.F. Villa. Art, by the way, is so amazing. The writing, so much fun. And we see them looking over at the Chrysler building with the ball on the top. And they're like, okay, that's where Dr. Steve and Strange is, but we're going to need our suits. So, you know, Dr. Steve gives them the two uh, orbs that have the anti-venom symbiotes in them. So he's got those two, or uh, Felicia has those two. And then she tells the guys, okay, you're going to drive the spider buggy, and here's what I want you to do. And we don't really hear her plan. It's very Ocean's Eleven-ish, which I like, because they reveal the stuff as it's being shown. Uh, well, it's, I guess that's the opposite of uh, uh, Ocean's Eleven, because Ocean's Eleven shows you the whole plan, and then it kind of goes wrong. This is a little different. This kind of teases at some of the plan, and then you get the reveals of what the plan are, and that's equally as effective, I feel. So you find out that the ghost dog... That was uh, that was in the the book before in um, in Doctor Strange's book. I think uh, I think Donny Cates created him. I think maybe and uh, he shows up and his name is Bats. I think and he's awesome. Like he shows up and they go, okay, you're our last member of the team. You know how to get to Stephen. Like get through to Stephen. So you're gonna help us. Like I'm gonna bring you to Stephen. I'm gonna bring you to the orb, and you're gonna because once you go into the symbiote, it's gonna keep turning you around and get you know you're gonna get lost. So you're going to help bring me to Steven. And uh, so the dog's like, okay, let's do this. So she gets on a green goblin glider, flies up uh, so she, that she stole. Uh, she flies up to the orb. Uh, she cracks the one of the uh, orbs onto herself and gives her an anti-venom symbiote, then jumps up lands inside the suit she's kind of burning her way through it because that's what the symbiote uh, her symbiote does and the dog is kind of leading her where to go in the giant orb um because the orb's like half a city block it's like really big and so she's kind of navigating through there with the dog and they find Stephen strange uh in the center of it and she pulls out the second orb smashes it onto his chest and puts an anti-venom symbiote on dr strange and this frees him from the hold that the the symbiotes had on him and she grabs them and they continue to melt through the ground and the dog leads them out and they fall from the Chrysler building and they get caught by the spider buggy that's coming by at the, it's driving by on the wall right at that. They timed it perfectly. And I'm like, this is so fun. It's so fun. And the, the spider buggy actually shoots webbing out and swings itself around and brings them to safety. And then of course they bounce off a couple roofs, the tire flies off, dragons are descending on them and then uh, they crash. So that when they crash, uh, the whole time the dog is like, yeah, there's a, there's something else that Steven has on him, but he hasn't activated it. Uh, I guess he was going to use it as a plan B, but he didn't get to it before the symbiotes got him. So this is what that is. And it's a piece of Yggdrasil, the, uh, the life tree. And so 
now Black Cat has it, and all the dragons now are descending on them because they're like, oh, we got to get Doctor Strange back for Null. Um, so they're all coming down, and they're like, we're going to die. And Black Cat goes, we are going to die. And then the dog goes, what about the tree? And she goes, well, what does it do? And he goes, I don't know. He's like, but maybe you can figure it out. So she grabs the tree and looks at it, and she goes, uh, you know, I like, I don't want us to die. And so the tree is like, okay. And the tree turns her into an Asgardian. And she's like, where did this come from again? And that's when Bats goes, it came from Asgard. Uh, it's Yggdrasil, the, the life tree. I'm like, that's so freaking awesome. And I think that was set up before, like, uh, the Yggdrasil sliver uh, before, too. So now we have issue three here. And uh, again, Judd McKay, C.F. Villa, amazing team. I love C.F.'s art. I love Jed's uh, writing on this. It's so good. Pepe Raza's covers are fantastic. Um, and we get a Asgardian uh, black hat, which, you know me, I'm always kind of like roll my eyes at stupid stuff like that, where it's like, oh, we're going to give you the power of this person. Uh, you know, it, it's like another, it's like power fantasy stuff where it's like, this person is going to uh, get the power of this. But what this reminds me of a little bit is they did a lot of that in War of the Realms, but I kind of liked how they did it in War of the Realms because they brought Asgardian stuff to Earth um, or Earth beings to Asgard to like replace like Daredevil replaced Heimdall and stuff like that. So like, I kind of liked all of those things like those are kind of goofy power fantasy things but they did it like in a real some of them in really interesting ways like making the blind man the new heimdall i thought that was just kind of cool and fun and this is kind of neat i'm like this is awesome like i know you're just doing it for like an issue so it gets passed for me i kind of like this like uh, and it adds um something to the story because it's not just her getting a power and it's that easy that's the other part a lot of times when they just make you know, a ghost rider, you know, punisher into a ghost rider, into a cosmic ghost rider, into a, uh, you know, whatever, someone who uh, follows uh, Galactus and then follows Thanos. It's like, it's just all these like things that are just there to, you know, keep adding and stacking powers. This is a little different because there's, there's a stake to this. Like there's real stakes to her saying yes to this power. Uh, we find out that this tree has a being that lives inside of it that is granting her these powers. And it's telling her, like, if you say yes to me, you can kill this no god, you can kill all your enemies, you can do whatever you want, I'll help you. And he, she goes, but you got to say yes to me, and in return, I'll give you whatever you want, like, whatever life you want. And she's like, well, let me see a, a fraction of this power, because now all these dragons, like 20 dragons, are raining down on us, and they're about to kill me and my friends, and I don't want us to die. So show me a sliver of that power so I can save my friends, and then we can negotiate. So while her body's acting in the real world, her mind is inside this room with this guy who is, I guess, uh, dressed to look like her dad. And she's like, you're not my dad. He died. And he's like, yeah, I'm not your dad. I'm not the fox or nothing. I was like, I'm just, I'm a being. And this was the, I searched your mind. And this is something that I thought you'd be comfortable talking to. And she's like, okay, so let's talk. So in her mind, that's happening. But her body, she does slices like 20 of those dragons in half no problem kills all of them in a blink of an eye um and uh, and meanwhile her teammates are watching her like power up and then dr strange wake up and he wakes up and goes what's happening to black cat and as he's waking up the the anti-symbiote is it already left her when she you know it burned off when she became this god being but his is starting to burn off now too and he wakes up and he looks up and sees her and he's like oh crap she touched the branch uh and then so we cut into her mind and while she's losing control of her powers outside, she killed the dragons, but now she might actually erupt and go supernova and, and kill everyone else. In her mind, she's being talked to by this being who's showing her portraits of like things that happened to her in her life. So he shows her like Venom tormenting her and he shows like other uh, heroes and villains that have tormented her and walked away from her. Peter Parker walking away from her and, uh, you know, and lovers that, you know, she's not with anymore and stuff. And she's like, you know what? Stop showing me all the men that have hurt me. And she's like, uh, he's like, yeah, but you could be so much more. Like, he's like, I'm sorry if you don't want to see that stuff. That's fine. Uh, he goes, but I'm trying to show that you don't have to be a victim anymore. Like, if you if you say yes to me, I'll help you accomplish wonders. And they actually show a frame where she is holding, she is wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, and that is actually a storyline that's coming up at some point later this summer, I think, where she's going to actually go steal the Infinity Stones, uh, which is, I'm like, so they're kind of setting that up here. So I'm it sounds silly it really does but the way jed writes this it's very like 
over the top and, and kind of fun. And I love that vibe. And I think the art complements that style of storytelling that Jed is doing. So th these three issues are fantastic to me. Um, so in the end, she's seeing all these visions and he's like, you can bring back your dad. You can, you know, re reacquaint with your family. Uh, you can build a new family. Here's you on the throne. And you can have all these men that have ever and women that you've ever fallen in love with worship you again, you know, and everything. And that's when she goes, wait, what did you say? And he, she, he shows her an image of her on the throne with all these people around her. And it does not sit well with Felicia. Felicia actually does have a line, a moral line. And one of them is she she, she doesn't want anyone to, she, she doesn't think anyone needs to be under any kind of influence to love her. Um, but yet she does, has been rejected before too, and has rejected other people. Um, but, uh, but she is not of that. She's like, no, if someone's going to love me, it's going to be real. That's a line that she apparently has. And I really like that. It gives her something. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm curious to see how that's going to be set up and pay off in a storyline where she goes after the infinity gauntlets, uh, and stones. So, um, so I'm curious, or infinity gauntlet and stones. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Cause I'm going to keep reading this book. Um, but this issue ends with Dr. Strange back to normal, all the dragons that were, they killed. Now there's a few more coming in to like take them out. And now she doesn't have, uh, she has a little bit of power left from the tree, but she refused the um, the bonding with the being that was in there. So the last page is her, and she's kind of still glowing a little bit with electricity, but she's back in her black cat costume. The dog is, you know, the ghost dog is floating behind her, bats. Um, and then you also, she says, Dr. Strange, can you teleport my two friends here in the spider buggy to a safe place? And then I'll stay here with the dog and you, and we'll continue to fight uh, this null guy and, and all of his forces. So the book ends with them basically going into battle and it says follow their adventures in King and Black 4, which I haven't reviewed yet, but we will talk about that very soon when Venom 34 comes out. I'll do them both together. Um, but the next issue of Black Cat will not be King and Black related, basically. Um, it'll pick up with uh, the new story that's going to lead into her, you know, going after the Infinity Stones, I imagine. So, uh, but I'm going to keep reading. I'm not going to review all of them probably on this show, but, uh, but I will say if it's going to be anything like this and the previous issues that came out, I'm on board. I'm going to keep reading the book because it's it's a lot of fun. So, uh, so yeah, this is a longer episode, but I really wanted to gush about Black Cat a lot. So if you've read these issues, please let me know what you think of them, what you thought of Spider-Woman, what you thought of uh, you know Black Cat. And now we're technically past International Women's Day on the East Coast, uh, but it is still that on the in Central Time and the West Coast. So uh, in a happy International Women's Day to all the women out there. Anyone who uh, is a woman who watches this show, thank you for being here too. And obviously thank you guys as well. Um, but it, it's awesome awesome that, um, you know, this kind of lined up for that. I was like, you know, I wanted to do something kind of that focused on female characters and I was going to do something with Spider-Gwen, but I need more time to like read stuff and get stuff done for Spider-Gwen. So this was perfect. I was like, oh, I can talk about Spider-Woman and Black Cat in the same uh, episode together. And it can kind of be our like International Women's Day episode. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, you know, did or didn't, whatever <laughs> your thoughts are, let me know down below. But this was fun. These are good issues. Um, I didn't love the Spider-Woman book as much as I did the Black Cat one, uh, but it's only because I didn't feel like it was a strong tie-in. But I am intrigued by the High Evolutionary story, so I'm probably going to pick up at least one more issue to see if that still hooks me. Um, but this, I'm going to non-stop read Black Cat. Like Jed McKay has sold me. I'm loving this, and I can't wait to see where Felicia Hardy goes next. So thank you all so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.